Today, we're going to be looking at how to create an energy effect from today's popular game. So let's dive in and look at how. If you want to see how I made this grass or these dust particles, I'll talk about that a bit more at the end of the video. So we'll be going ahead and making it so that you can go ahead and draw this with a curve and that it will also be animated as well. This works in Eevee and Cycles. Here you can see the node setup. So let's walk through how we can create this. So first, what we're gonna do is go ahead and add a Bezier curve. I'm gonna tap into edit mode there and I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm gonna go ahead and straighten that out. Now, if we come over here under the curve options and go to geometry, we can go ahead and change the depth there so that we can get a cylindrical surface, which is what I want for this. Now, with this selector, we're gonna go ahead and click a new material and we're going to call this energy material. So we're going to be using a lot of noise and gradients to create this effect. So first let's go ahead here and we're going to add a texture coordinate node. We're going to put that back there and we're going to drag that UV off into a mapping node. We're going to plug that into the vector and we're going to drag that off and create another mapping node also plugged into the vector. This one leave at default, type the point. Up here, we're going to set this one up to vector. Now what we're going to do with this map is use this to drive the gradients. And we're going to create two gradients, one that changes the color from the bottom to the top, and one that helps the top and the bottom kind of fade out into transparency. Down here, we're going to use this one to drive our noise and our animation. So let's do our noise first. So I'm gonna go ahead, switch over to rendered view so that we can see this here. And we're going to go ahead and drag this off into a noise texture. We're going to plug that into the vector and then we're going to go ahead and plug this color into the alpha here so that we can drive the alpha of our tube. We'll go ahead here and put a color ramp there because we need a black and white value in order for this to work. And we're going to go ahead and just cramp this just a bit. Now, if you're an EV, you're going to need to come over here under your surface and settings there, change your blend mode to alpha blend. And you'll see that now we have this see through option on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the color here on the emission just for now, just so that we can see this a bit easier. Perfect. Now what we want to do is go ahead and drive the look of this noise. So we can change the look of this noise in a couple ways, but what I recommend doing is setting the detail to zero, and then you can go ahead and play with the scale until you get a size that you are happy with. I'm going to go with around there. Then on the mapping node, you'll want to go ahead and play with scale. So that'll depend on the direction that you have your object. So in this case, I'd probably want to work with the X here, and we're going to go ahead and kind of stretch that out by lowering the value. And what that's going to do is kind of give us that stretch energy beam look. Now, we want to go ahead and add a bit more noise variation within this energy beam. So what we're going to do is actually plug in a noise texture into our noise texture vector, and that'll kind of just warble it around a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is move these back. We're going to create another mix node. Make sure this is set to color, and we're going to mix the color of the mapping vector data with noise. So we'll go ahead and leave that to mix up there. We'll add another noise texture, and we will plug that into the bottom right here. Now once that noise texture is plugged into the B down here, we can use this to kind of drive our value there. Let's go ahead and adjust the scale here a bit. I want this to be a bit larger as I don't want it to radically distort it in all these tiny variations and add too much detail. So first of all, I'm gonna set this detail to zero. I'm gonna set this to something like 2.5. You can of course play with these numbers until you find something you like. Now what you can do is you can go ahead and turn this up and down until you get a setting that you're happy with. I'm gonna set mine to around 0.25, perfect. Great, now we wanna go ahead and drive a bit of animation. Then after that, we're gonna focus on color and kind of fading out this effect. So what we wanna do is create a driver that will plug in the location. Now to animate this texture, we're gonna go ahead and animate the UV in the texture coordinates. This is a pretty common practice amongst video game companies as it's a highly performant and friendly way to animate things. You'll see it used on things like water, energy effects, and fire. So determine what direction you want your energy to move in. In my case, I want it to move up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to use the X value. So what we want to do is add a value node. We'll bring that back over here. We're going to drag this off into a combined XYZ node. Make sure it's plugged into whatever value you want to use. In my case, that's X, and we'll plug that vector in there. 
Now, when we drive this value, it will only animate that X value. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is do a hashtag frame. And what this will do is that when we hit play, it will go through every frame and up a number. But I don't want it to go up that fast. So what we're gonna do is divide this by a number. The larger the number, the higher it'll be. Now you can add a math divide here. Click math, drag that on there, and do a divide there. And you can use this here to control the speed of your animation. So the higher I turn this, you can see the slower it gets. So I'm gonna go ahead, set mine to something like 200, and you can see that we're getting a nice kind of energy beam look. Now, as I said before, you can adjust the scale of this noise texture here, this one, the scale here, and the factor to adjust the look of your beam. But let's go ahead and start focusing on adding some color and some fade. So we want this to emit color and we want it to gradually go from one color to the next. In the case of this example, we're going to go from blue to green. So the way we're going to do that is by using linear gradients to drive the look. So let's go ahead and off this mapping node here, we're gonna plug it into a gradient texture. So let's search gradient and we'll plug that into the gradient texture right there and we have a vector. And we're gonna go ahead and create two ramps from this. One for the top and the bottom and then one for the color. So let's go ahead here. Let's drag this up and we're gonna do a color ramp plug into the factor. Let's go ahead and do that down here too. Color ramp plugged into the factor. Great. Now, if we look at how this is previewing, we can see that it is giving us black at the top and white in the middle, which is exactly what we want. And since we have that plugged into the vector data, if we bring this to the halfway mark, it should work halfway on this. And we'll go ahead, plus this plus sign here, add another stop, drag this to the end and make it black. Now we have this going from one end to the next, but I want it to be a bit more, more subtle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do ease. And that'll give us that kind of subtle gradation. We'll use this to drive the transparency so that it fades off onto the tips a bit more. Let's look at this gradient ramp up here. We're gonna use this one for color. And we can see here that this is already going from the top to the bottom, so that's perfect. So we can go ahead and leave that one as it is. So let's go ahead, move this out here a bit. And what we wanna do is here is our alpha data currently. We wanna go ahead and add this on top of it so that these tips fade in and out. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we'll turn off that preview there. We'll add a mix node here, drag that down here, and we're going to add a color. Now we can go ahead and plug this color ramp here into the bottom so that it multiplies onto the top. We're gonna to click multiply. And what that'll do is only overlay the black data. Now, when we plug this back into the alpha, you should see that now our tips are fading in and off and we're getting a nice gradual fade. Perfect. Now, if you're wondering how I got that taper effect, you can just tab into edit mode here, grab your point and hit Alt S. And you'll see that you can drag that in and out to change the size of the taper. Perfect. Next up, let's go ahead and change the color and the emission. I'm also going to turn on bloom so that we can get a little bit of a better idea of how that glow is working. Great. So we're gonna use this color ramp to drive the color of both the emission and the base color. So let's go ahead and drag this off here. We're going to plug this into a mix node and I want this to go into the factor. So I'm gonna click factor down here and we have the color node. And then what we're going to do is plug this into our base color and also our emission color. And then now what we can do is pick two colors here. So I'm gonna turn this brightness all the way up I'm going to pick a luminescent green, and then I'm going to pick a luminescent blue. And you can see that I'm now getting a nice gradual fade from one color to the next. Perfect. So now we have this and it's working with our shader. So if we tab in here, we can go ahead and move these points all around. Or if we want, we can even go ahead and draw various points in here as well. And you can see how that works as well, how it moves all the way along down. Now, if you notice that you're having trouble with your textures moving along the curve in a natural path, what you can actually do is come over into the curve tab and you'll see that under the shape, there is a texture space. And if you open that texture space, it's set to auto texture space. However, I found that sometimes when trying to apply a noise texture to this, it didn't work. So by clicking match texture space, 
I was able to get everything working. Now in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I teach you how to learn the glass. So I've actually already done that in a 60 second tutorial, which you can get here.